Hello YouTubes, this is Grimweird coming back at you with more Enigmatica 2 Expert Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. As always, we are joined by our lovely avatar, Zombie Steve. Um, so I mentioned last time that I wanted to start getting into um, Ender IO. So between then and now, I've been doing a bunch of crafting. Um, if we take a look at Ender IO, If we take a look first at the gate, so the gate is the simple machine, machine chassis, and this thing is a bit of a beast to make. So the reason, the biggest reason being the hardened cell frame. So if we take a look at the hardened cell frame, we need to put, you know, some steel casing from mechanism, um, and then just some various invar and steel pieces. This doesn't look too bad. However, what we're converting is the energy cell frame from thermal expansion. And if we take a look at that, well, okay, then we need to make machine frames to infuse to turn into that. That doesn't look too bad. But now we look at machine frames, and these are just a pain in the butt to make. And the reason being is that they use sort of core blocks from a bunch of different mods. Um, and so if you want to make a bunch of them, it's like you got a device frame, Okay, that's not too bad, but you got to make them. Heavy engineering blocks, uh, okay, not too bad, but you know, you got to make them. Machine frames for RF tools, these are sort of a pain in the butt. Um, you get down into these heating vents, and next thing you know, you're making a gazillion copper cables. Um, so you got to make those. And they require machine cases, which require advanced machine casing, which require basic machine casing. So next thing you know, you're making all that crap. Um, you get into like the uh, iron casing and next thing you know you're making hardened casing and making sturdy casing um, get into the machine case here and you gotta make more of these and yeah it's just it's just a lot a lot of stuff um, to get these bad boys so what I've done is I have uh, worked on that and I now have um, all the stuff we need for about, oops, I need to convert those over still. Uh, we, we're going to have everything we need for 16, um, 16 runs, 16 of these simple machine chassis. Um, so that's going to be good. That's going to give us 16 uh, hardened cell frames. Um, and then, oh, I forgot about this. There's always more stuff. I'll also figure out, have to figure out how to make uh, those plates. But um, that's what I've been working on now, is just making 16 of these bad boys to feed into here. Because if we look at the uh, machine chassis, it's going to be used in everything. It's going to be, I'm going to want one for a sag mill, uh, for a wired charger, alloy smelter. Um, going to need them for simple machine parts which are going to be used elsewhere uh, so let's take a look at that maybe they're not used elsewhere anyway maybe I'm doing overkill now that I take a look at this um, I thought I was going to end up needing more of these Now that I look at this, I'm only seeing, uh, oh, industrial machine chassis, that's the one I was missing. So then you use the industrial machine chassis to make even more machines. Okay, I knew I was missing something here. I knew I needed a bunch of these. So even 16 of these, I'm going to burn through them reasonably quick, making all of these, uh, making all of these uh, Ender I.O. machines. Um, as I either use several just for a simple machine or as I then use several more as um, as the industrial machine chassis. So anyway, that's what I've been working on. Um, and I've got everything I need here. I forgot the final step here. We gotta go back downstairs. Um, and we gotta infuse those bad boys. So let's look at uh, compressed. Grab some of this, 
and I'm looking for my infuser here. Need to infuse these. Am I doing something wrong here? Possibly. Let's double check the recipe. So I'm trying to do this and it takes 400 redstone uh, per one of these. All right, so we're probably going to need more compressed redstone than I got out immediately. But that's an important safety tip. So each of these counts as um, eight or 80, I should say. So two more of those. OK, one more of those. So we got 400 in there now. Just going to go ahead and dump all that in there. See how far we get. Not far enough. All right, so we need another 4,000 redstone. So we're going to go grab some of these, and we're going to go um, the enrichment chamber. And we're going to make a much more of these bad boys. So then while this is cooking up, um, all of this is going to lead us to uh, powering up the Empowerer again um, for the second time. And so these things take a ton of power. I think they're 2 million each. So we're going to need to round up all of our power supplies. I don't use this very often, and it's such a power hog that um, I don't tend to keep it wired up. So what I'm going to have to do is run around my base and collect all a bunch of power cells, four of them to be precise, to hook up to don't want to do that one because I don't want my ME system to go down. Where's my, I'm trying to remember where my, uh, I think I'm using my energy cell, my thermal foundation energy cell on my digital miner. I might have to go grab that one too. I think my digital mining is probably done anyway, so I should go harvest that. It's over in the nether. So never a dull moment here in, uh, Minecraft. Let's bust out some more of these. Almost got enough. And there we go. So now we got all the ingredients to feed into the um, into the empower these five bits. So now we just get got to round up enough power supply to get to them. And I can use some wiring um, to stretch between them if I don't have enough. But uh, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to run to the Nether and uh, grab my digital miner and that um, energy cube, um, and then I'll be right back. Oh, and if I haven't said it before, I love Brown Magic, the uh, teleportation um, ability that's on Osglow Glass, Osglow Glass for Tinker's Construct. So, for those of you who may be watching this out of sequence or just pulling up things that you like, um, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I have my uh, X, which I almost never use, but I made anyway, uh, in my backpack. And uh, as you can see, it teleports me straight to where my digital miner is in the nether. So that's cool, cool, cool. I've also got um, 
Oscal glass hooked up to the comma that I use as sort of a just free point for whenever I want to go back and forth between things. And I've got uh, brown magic on my obsidian ex excavator as well for going out to my cattle and mob farm. So very fun stuff. This is the bad boy I'm looking for here. So let's see, this appears to be done. So we will stop. I'm going to check my map, make sure that I've put a spot here. I have not, so I'm gonna go new digital, just so I can remember where I've already mined. Ah, pick these things up. And those are all using, also on Osco Glasses, the uh, Global Traveler. Um, and so all of that got teleported back and put into my ME network. So I will now use uh, Brown Magic on my hammer to teleport back down to my base. And all of that stuff has gone in here, so I gotta pull it all out. Pull out my miner so I don't forget to set that back up again later. Pull out my energy cell to use to power our empowerer. Uh, pull out my inner chest because I'll need that again when I set up my digital miner. All right. To start putting these guys out here. That is blue is usually input, so I need to change the back side. Back side, so that's up, down, left, right, back. I need that to go to output. So that's bad boys good to go. So here, orange is output. Yep, we're all set there. We've got power. This is from my outgoing network, so the, if we look at the PowerShell card, which links all these power cells together, um, this should be ID4, and it is, and it has power. Slap that down there. Orange is output. Um, ID4, we got power there. So now, I'm not sure I want to tear much else up. I have some input things going on. Um, so let me see. I think maybe I'll just try and wire. I'm not sure. I think you have to power these from the underneath, which is a pain in the ass. So let me, I know I've got more power shells roaming around here. So I'm going to pause here and find something else that I can use and be right back. Okay, and I am back. I grabbed the power shell off of the... Uh, off of the uh, inductor ma induction matrix. Uh, that may mean, so these are not receiving power from anything anymore, these three guys. So right now all that movement you're seeing is them equalizing probably as they fill up the empower. Um, so I'm not sure, let's see, two million. Oh, I should have plenty of power to uh, bust these guys out. So now let me take a look at this again. I've only used the empower a few times. Um, so we want to be on this tab. And I think the, I don't think which cardinal direction any of these are in matter. Um, however, I think, you know, the invar plate needs to be between the steel rod and the invar gear. And I think the steel casing also needs to be, you know, across from it. So in other words, this clockwise, counterclockwise order I think is important. I'm not sure of that, but I'm going to try and match it. So I'm going to put um, in of our plates on one, and then let's just do it this way. So we're going to slap that there. Then this goes opposite, and then. The 
rod goes on the left. And finally, the gear goes on the right. And in the middle, we have the energy cell. Hey, it looks like it's working. Keep an eye on our power. going down but I think it's fine so probably another 20 30 seconds here This is all sort of cool looking, however it is sort of also a bit crazed. Complications for the sake of complications. But hey, I guess that's the spice of life. If everything were easy to do and auto craft and etc, then this would get real boring real quick. So what I'll do is, I, pay, I think you can only do one of these at a time, and of course I want to make a bunch of them. Um, so what I'll do here is we'll just uh, wait, see how long this takes to finish. Um, and when it finishes, I will then cut and do a bunch more of them, see how far I can get with the power I have. I wonder if something's wrong. I always get nervous. This thing takes a while, uh, but I'm never quite sure how long it should take. And I'm not quite sure how to tell if it's moving forward or if it's hung. Uh, errors I have made in the past was not giving it enough power per tick. Oh, there it goes. And other errors I have made as uh, using the wrong kind of things here like accidentally putting steel plates or steel gears in instead. However, none of that was a problem. We actually got it here. Oh, and then I think I right click it. Is that right? Shift right click it. Get off the damn book. Then shift right click it. Oh, dang it. Just messed up my linked inventory. remember how to get that off of there. While I think about it, I'm going to run upstairs and relink my inventory to go into my ME system. So I know breaking it will do it, but that seems wrong. When in doubt, I guess we could read the instructions. Let's see, so the instructions, if I go here, I don't think it tells you how to get it off. Be that way. We'll just break your ass. Alrighty. So we have one hardened cell furnace or cell frame. Uh, so that Let's see, and there's my empower. And that should allow us to then make the simple machine chassis. Um, I have not gathered the components, the rest of the components, because I knew this one was going to take a ton of time. 
I think I have some Infinity by Metal Gears. I think I can. I know I can make Dark Iron beers uh, bars. I have Infinity by Metal Gears that I think I got out of chests in villages and the Nether, etc. This I forget exactly how we make this. Titanium alumide. Oh, that's right. I think this is. Uh, I think we might have a problem here. This is why you always got to check all the recipes and all the components before you get too excited about moving forward in this damn mod pack. So aluminum, fine. Um, titanium dust. I forget how we get titanium dust, but I don't think it's simple. Because we do not have access to rutile ore yet. Because rutile ore is only on these planets. Titanium ingots are craftable, it says. So if we take a look at titanium ingots. Right. They are craftable, but I don't even see them here. All right, so let's back all this up. So, uh, the advanced metallurgic fabricator. That's the other thing I got to do is I got to figure all this out. And I got to find a source of salt. Magnesium I can do, carbon plates I can do, liquid chlorine I can do, but salt, I'm not exactly sure where to get salt. Alright, so lots more planning to do. I had forgotten that we needed to get into the whole titanium thing. But the good news is, is we now have uh, the ability to make a bunch of these hardened cell frames. So we'll get all that set up. And I will pause here and uh, burn through um, the rest of my 15 um, things to make those frames. And then put all my power modules back in their place. And then start investigating the advanced metallurgic whatchamajigger. Um, so that we can try and make this bad boy. So we need that stuff. Advanced metallurgic fabricator. I have never made that before. Don't know what it is, etc., etc. 100,000 FE per tick is pretty serious, so that's cool. Um, so then it requires all of this stuff, which requires some of that stuff, so it looks like I might have to empower some palace crystals. So I'm going to have to make some Pulsating iron. Alright, so this is going to be a bit more complicated than I remembered. But anyway, I'm going to be right back when I have plans for the next step. Bye! Alright, I took a look at our uh, episode runtime so far and realized we have only got a few more minutes. So um, let's just go ahead and uh, look at what we got coming ahead for us for this. Um, as we cook these bad boys through the empower. So, let's see, to make the aluminum ingots, um, we need the advanced metallurgic whatchamajigger. And uh, if we go to the structure preview, it's a huge beast. Um, 
So if we look at this, it's got all sorts of stuff going on. The material list, we need machine controller, hardened glass. We need uh, mutagen, which is going to cause us to get into gendistry. Uh, we're going to need all of those bits and pieces. Um, so this is going to be a, a big project, probably a multi-episode project for me to make all this crap. Uh, when I looked into this, um, if we look at uh, mutagen, so apparently I need to make this bad boy, which requires making, um, most of this isn't too bad. Power module requires a basic energy cube for mechanism. Um, the mutagen tank requires sort of quartz tank. I'm trying to look ahead here. I don't think we're uh, looking at too much weird stuff there. Um, the machine controller. Uh, if we take a look at that. So that's going to require, I think this is probably going to be, you know, one of the things that's going to take a bit of time. So the casings are each going to require redstone engineering blocks and modularium alloy. Uh, ME controllers, so I'm going to need to make another ME controller or several possibly. Let's see how many does it take again? Only one machine controller, so that's not too horrible. 16 machine casings, um, which means 16 redstone engineering, so it's just a ton of stuff. Here's finally, I see we need six blocks of fiery metal, so I'm actually happy that I went ahead and made the arc furnace. Um, and got that uh, into there because I think we now have some fiery metal maybe from my wireless is out of range why is my wireless out of range that don't seem right something's going on there Oh, I've actually run my power cells dry. So this isn't completing. All right. Well, I got to go deal with that situation. But the bottom line is, uh, and I'll probably end the episode right here, is uh, we got a lot of stuff to do to make that advanced metallurgic fabricator um, so that we can get some titanium, so that we can get into Ender IO. Um, so I'm going to go uh, deal with my power situation and then finish these up. One thing I did want to mention is that I did figure out how to get this uh, finished product off of here without breaking it. And that is using an open hand, right clicking on the empower. So right click on the empower with an open hand to uh, collect your finished product if it ever finishes, if you don't run out of power. So yeah, until next time, I'm going to continue to uh, burn through these. We've got four and maybe a half <laughs> hardened frames, so we're stocking those up. Um, we've sort of seen what we're up against with the uh, advanced metallurgic fabricator to make titanium to uh, continue on with Ender I.O. simple chassis. Um, need to I don't have a lot of the stuff if we look at this advanced metallurgic uh, fabricator thing here so if I look here and look there look here all of this stuff um, is going to take a lot of organization and um, all of this stuff is going to be a lot of manual crafting um, so I need to probably start working on trying to figure out uh, if how much of this I want to try and automate. Um, and if I automate a bunch of stuff going into this, I may find that I need to expand my ME network. So basically there's just all sorts of stuff to do. So I'm going to start organizing that and uh, next time we'll come back and see how far we can get on it. Bye for now. Okay, just one quick uh, epilogue to that episode. So to fix my power back up, I basically had to uh, 
get these networked back up to the output of my induction matrix. Um, and so I tried to sort of bootstrap myself into it by grabbing one of my RTGs um, and just uh, hooking it up. And But I realized that since I'd taken one of the power cells, or since I had drained that system, I couldn't... I broke the RTG with a pickaxe. The RTG went into my ME system and then I couldn't get it back out. So because I had run power out of my uh, power cell group that was hooked on here. So basically that's having this still running on, having my ME system still running on a power cell was sort of ridiculous. I had already run power upstairs through here so I dropped this line from there down to there, and now our ME system is hooked into our big, um, you know, our big 25.6 giga RF induction, ma induction matrix. Um, so now I don't have to worry about that. I went ahead and threw the RTGs. Um, I used the uh, smart wrench, the RF tools smart wrench, to turn all the outside ones of these to input and it's outputting into the induction matrix so this is where power goes into our induction matrix but I went ahead and stacked my RTGs on there um, so then once uh, oh and then of course I had to um, replace the power cell that I had stolen off of this side um, so this is power cell coming out if you can sort of see the plug behind it is red like this one is red um, as opposed to that one is green. So this is now back hooked back up. So all of my power cells on um, link ID 4 were then powered back up from the our big storage induction matrix, which then these guys are all now back at main uh, full power because they're all back hooked back up to our big power. And it did finish its thing. And I wanted to show that if you right click on the power you can pick up its its finished product alrighty so that's where we are going to definitely end this episode I just wanted to show you sort of and <laughs> remind myself if I look back at this two years from now uh, what I needed to do and what I needed to take care of and hardwiring the ME system was something that I should have done a long time ago especially once I start pulling out things and playing with them um, so that I don't, you know, end up breaking something and it go into my ME system and then I can't get it back out. But let's see, I think that's it. Yep, that's it for this thing. I'm going to continue to bash through um, our stuff here go ahead and get another one of these set up. that moving again and uh, then next time we'll start looking at that advanced metallurgic fabricator for making titanium and for breaking into uh, Ender IO stuff. See you next time.